So listen to this, 73% of millennials are now living paycheck to paycheck and overall 60% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck as well. If you wanna build wealth, you wanna ensure that your daily habits are not setting you back. I've spent the majority of my life thinking about money. I've gotten a degree in finance and I also work with clients as a financial advisor. I've learned that if you're able to avoid these common money mistakes that you increase the odds to get what you want in life. So the first habit that you should avoid is paying for status. Now status is a hierarchy game that has been around since the beginning of time. Even when we were Neanderthals, we basically understood that as humans, we want to signal that we are better than other humans. I'm better than you. Oftentimes in our society, what that looks like is getting a better job promotion and then showing that off or having a better title. Maybe you buy more stuff like cars or luxury watches, etc. For example, most people that buy Ferraris are probably buying it for status. Sure, there's gonna be a minority of people that really appreciate the inner workings of a Ferrari, but most people that buy them just wanna be seen and want people to know that they've spent $300,000 on a car. Well, what color is your baguette? If Ferraris were as common as say your Toyota Prius driving down the road, Road, would everybody still want one? Probably not. So you can see this evidenced with many Americans these days, they have over a thousand dollar car payment. If the car payment is that high, that means the average car is selling for $67,000 while being financed for 72 months. That kind of shows to me that people are focusing on the wrong thing. They're probably focusing on, you know, showing off to their friends with a really high car payment. Instead, they should really focus on becoming wealthy and not having a car loan that they can't afford just to impress people that they don't really care about. Now, the people that you should be caring about are your closest friends, but trying to keep up with your friends financially puts you on the fast track to becoming poor. As we get older and our friends start to become more successful and they probably make more money, their spending habits are gonna change and you're gonna feel that pressure to try to keep up with them. I have a personal story about this. So a few years ago, my friend Christian, he became really successful in the commercial real estate business. And basically how he liked to spend his money was he was a huge foodie. So he would start to go to all these Michelin star restaurants. He would always be going to these one or two star Michelin restaurants. And basically he would just make recurring reservations at all these different places in San Francisco. So at first I would oblige and I would go with him, but then I started to realize like, dude, I'm spending a hundred dollars every single time at the very minimum when I go out to eat with him. And I'll never forget it. One time after we went to a Michelin star French restaurant, we were still hungry afterwards. So what did we do? We went and got Chipotle after the meal. So I've basically learned that you need to resist the temptation to keep up with your friends, especially if it's not within your means. So for Christian, it didn't really matter if he spent an extra hundred or $200 on a meal every single month. But for me at the time who wasn't making that much money, it definitely made a difference. When it comes to personal finance, everyone's on their own path and their own timelines. And what's a good decision for you might not be a good decision for your friend and vice versa. Also, if they're a true friend, they're gonna understand that you have different goals in life and they're gonna be okay and still your friend, even if you can't keep up with them financially. So this sounds really counterintuitive, but you really need to look out for yourself when it comes to your personal finances because other people aren't going to do that for you unless they're just like some super sympathetic friend or something like that. A little later on, we're going to talk about a bad money habit that is pretty controversial. But for now, I want to talk about the concept of having bad consumer debt. And right now, the way that that's kind of manifesting itself is with the rise of buy now, pay later companies. These are also controversial and they are the companies like Afterpay, Klarna, and Affirm. They basically offer you a short-term loan so that you can go buy something that's a consumer good, such as maybe your Nike shoes, maybe you got some pots and pans or types of furniture like that. It allows you to buy something not within your means and you would just pay them off in four different interest-free payments over time. But the thing with these interest-free payments is there's a catch. If you fail to pay on time, you're actually charged late fees and oftentimes those late fees are gonna be 25% of the value of the item that you bought. And that's the whole point of these buy now, pay later companies. They know that you're probably going to miss payments at least at some point when you're using these because most people are not good with having debt. So the best rule here that I have for myself and hopefully for you is that if you are considering buying something with buy now, pay later, think to yourself, could I afford this item outright? And if you can't afford it outright, then just stay away from buy now, pay later entirely. Before we get into money habit number four, I wanna remind you guys to actually subscribe to this channel if you're enjoying this type of content and wanna get more personal finance content in the future. All right, bad money habit number four is not saving for your future. Earlier on, I said that 70% 
93% of millennials are still living paycheck to paycheck. Now, one way to fix this is just to plan a little bit better. A similar analogy might be a bodybuilder. You know that they have to meal prep and plan out all their meals for the week to ensure that they're sticking to a good diet. Finance is quite the same. Saving money takes some pre-planning, but if you're able to do it, you're gonna have a lot better time. So I have two steps that I like to take. The first step I like to do is to actually automate it. So what you can do is just go into your online banking, create a recurring transfer. So every time that you get paid, five to 10% of your paycheck goes into a new savings account automatically. Step number two, I know that this sounds really intuitive, but many people don't do it. You wanna go and look at your credit card statement and see where you're spending money on your wants or your discretionary expenses. Oftentimes people don't even realize how much money they're spending on their favorite things, such as eating out, perhaps exercise classes or $7 lattes. No matter what it is, if you can trim just even some of your discretionary expenses and start to save that difference instead, you're gonna be a lot better off in the future with building your wealth. Now, an area of spending where it's easy to become impulsive with is if you're spending money on your loved ones or your friends, oftentimes our emotions get the better of us in these cases. You might be waiting in the checkout line at Target or your grocery store, or maybe you're in a new city and you go to a knickknack shop and you see something that's perfect for your friends, sisters, brothers, daughter, or whatever. <laughs> it's so cute. Are you shitting me? <laughs> Capitalism really popped off today, ladies. <laughs> You decide to buy that one thing impulsively and spend that money. Another example is if you're scrolling on Instagram and you see something that's really great for perhaps one of your friends, you decide to buy it right then and there. However, did you know that impulse purchases actually account for 40% of all the money that's spent on e-commerce? And that these e-commerce websites are literally designed to upsell you on products. So actually 64% of impulse shoppers actually purchase additional items with their intended purchase. So if you think about this, this is a compounded spending effect. You had the impulse to buy the original item and then all of a sudden you got upsold at the time of checkout, which means that you basically made an impulse purchase on top of an impulse purchase, which definitely hurts. The worst part of all this is that you'll probably put the impulsive purchase on a credit card, which means that if you don't pay off that credit card on time, you're gonna be charged interest payments on your debt. Interest rates on credit cards can be well over 20%. So that means if you're just making the minimum payments on your credit card, especially after you make some purchases, that could be your next money mistake. By paying just the minimum on your credit card debt, you could actually accrue so much debt that you become what's called in a debt spiral. That's where you accrue so much much debt that the incoming paychecks that you have aren't enough to pay off the interest that you have on your total debt balance. And I've actually seen this happen in real life to people. It is really, really crippling. Once your debt starts to spiral out of control, I mean, it's really hard to climb out of that. So we wanna make sure that we just avoid that altogether. So there's this really crazy example that I like to use, which is that if you bought a new shirt for $100 and you just made the minimum payment on a credit card over time, guess how much an in interest you would pay on that $100 t-shirt? The total cost of that t-shirt would actually be $214. So if you just make the minimum payment all the time, it could actually end up costing you double to buy that same t-shirt. If your credit card interest rate is say 18%, you wanna be making those payments off first. Like that is the best financial decision for you because the S&P 500, the market returns about 8% on average per year. However, if you can pay off your credit card debt and it's say at 18%, that's actually guaranteed ROI on that cash. So that's just something to note that if you do have credit card debt, that's usually the best use of your money right away. Now, earlier in this video, I mentioned that there was a money habit that was pretty controversial, and I wanna share with you guys what that is, and it's actually being cheap. Frugality is a great way to increase the difference between what you make and what you spend. However, being cheap when it comes to certain items can actually cost you more money in the long run. I actually experienced this when I had a car maintenance issue last year. Basically, the check engine light came on, and what happened was, there were some rats or there were some mice that were eating the wires underneath my hood. This was causing a lot of damage near the engine. So I took it to the dealership to get a quote for it. And it was $2,500, which I thought was absolutely insane. What I ended up doing is I took it to a cheaper mechanic, which I thought I was getting a great deal. He said it would only cost $400 to repair that problem. I thought to myself, man, this is perfect. I just saved, I don't know what, $2,100 by going to a cheaper mechanic and not letting the dealership rip me off. Well, the joke was on me 
because after about just two weeks, the check engine light came on again. I took the car to the dealership again and the cheaper mechanic, basically he just patched up the wires because he didn't want to take out all the parts required to make the full like actual proper fix. By the end of it all, I just had to get it fixed at the dealership. And so basically I wasted a bunch of time by going to a different mechanic and then getting it somewhat fixed. Had I just gone with the original service appointment, I would have probably been a lot better off. Oftentimes you're gonna see this in life. You can go with the cheaper type of service or the cheaper product. So let's say you buy a really cheap t-shirt that's gonna last you a certain amount of time, but you're probably better off just buying a really high quality item that's gonna last you a longer time. And that way you're not spending so much money every single, let's say two or three months buying new t-shirts. For certain things that you know that you're gonna need quality for, don't be cheap because it might actually cost you more money than intended. Now, speaking of things that might be costing you more money than you think, subscriptions are actually something that I wanna talk about. We often forget about canceling unwanted subscriptions and they can actually cost us a lot of money. In fact, 51% of Americans say that they have unwanted subscriptions and oftentimes it's because of the free trial that you're offered. You sign up for a free trial, you forget about the recurring payment and all of a sudden, bam, you have all these payments that are adding up. So this is true even for me, I was paying for Hulu and I probably used it once a month at most, if that. And so what I like to do is every quarter or every half year, I like to look at my credit card statements and just do a quick assessment of, am I spending money on the right things? My personal standard is that if I don't use the subscription service more than once or twice a month, I just cancel it. You could be wasting hundreds of dollars every single year by not keeping track of your subscriptions. And so a really good way to mitigate this is just to track your expenses, which I think many people don't do. Now you don't have to track your expenses to the exact cent or dollar. If you've watched some of my videos, you know that I've actually been tracking my expenses since 2014 to the cent. And I'm not saying that you have to be as extreme as that, but there are actually three benefits to tracking your expenses that I think we should talk about because it could really improve your financial life. Number one, the mere practice of tracking my expenses actually gave me some insight into what categories I spent a little bit too much money on and that I could trim back. Number two, I know that this might sound a little bit corny, but by tracking my expenses every single day, it was a consistent daily habit that kind of showed me that as long as I do something consistently, I can become more successful over time. It's this basis of consistency of doing a little bit every day that's helped me grow a lot of my businesses as well as my TikTok channel and my YouTube channel that you're watching here. Number three, it made me really good with money. By knowing how much money I was spending and how much money that was coming in, I just had a really good sense of, hey, how much am I spending this month? Is it too much? Am I spending too much on certain categories? Categories. I put it all in my fancy little financial master sheet that I have actually linked down below. It's completely free and I've talked about it in different videos. But basically by doing that, it's giving me, given me a lot of joy and a lot of fulfillment to do that. And so I've just become really good at money through this practice of tracking my expenses. Now, if you don't track your expenses, is it still possible to become wealthy? I would say, yes, it is still possible, but everything becomes a little bit harder. Honestly, the amount of effort that is taken to get a ballpark sense of how much you're spending is one of the best returns on your time. So I would definitely consider that if you're thinking about trying to get better with your money. Another great return on investment activity is actually investing. And many people don't start it soon enough. One of the first places that your money should go after after your debts and your needs are paid off is to start investing in hopefully a retirement account like the 401k or the Roth IRA, or just simply a standard brokerage account. By saving a percentage of your income and investing it, you can start to compound your wealth a lot faster. Let's say you're the age of 25 when you start investing and you're able to put $5,000 a year into your retirement account, getting a 7% average return from the market. By the time you're 65 years old, you're gonna have an ending balance of a million dollars and some change. Now. Take a look at this contrasting situation. If you wait till the age of 35 to start investing and you start doing 5,000 a year and trying to compound that same amount, guess what? By the time you're 65, you're only gonna have an ending balance of around $500,000. Subtracting out 10 years of contributions of $5,000 a year, that actually means that the difference is over $450,000 because you didn't start earlier. So I urge you guys to look into investing as soon as you can. I have a lot of videos on how to start investing, especially if you're a beginner that you can check out down below after this video. Now, the beauty of investing, let's say a Roth IRA or the 401k are the tax advantages that come with it. And so this is actually a mistake that many people make is that they fail to leverage the tax code. This will hurt you and prevent you from building more wealth. And so the richest people in the world, they spend a lot of time on mitigating their taxes and making sure that they're taking a lot of deductions that they're eligible for. The super rich will avoid paying taxes by setting up foundations, family offices. They might even move their primary 
primary residence in order to save a buck. But even if you aren't super rich, there are some common tax deductions that you can take to save a bunch of money. Besides your retirement account, you can deduct the mortgage interest from your mortgage, from your taxes, especially if the mortgage interest exceeds the standard deduction. You could also open a 529 plan for your kids or contribute to a health savings account. I'll leave a blog post link below with all the common tax deductions that you can take advantage of and hopefully that's gonna help you save some money. If you've gotten this far in the video, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'll actually leave a relevant video for you guys on the screen right now and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, peace.